my dear fathers, my dear sisters, my dear brothers, I'm also very happy to address you. I wish I could see all of you. I can see some names of other William Sequera, Sister Rosary, and Sister Jeevan, Sister Mary Francis, and so many others, perhaps they are there. And surely, for me also, you know, every time we give a talk, not only you have to think about it, reflect about it, we have to see for ourselves also how it applies to us also. So in that sense, the talk is beneficial for me too. I am told that uh, there are quite many participants, as uh, Father said, from all over India, and also perhaps a few from abroad also. And when I asked him a mischievous question, how many fathers and how many sisters would be there? He said, more sisters will be there, he said. So that's a consolation for me too. You know, we men always talk about women and women always talk about the men, I think so, even in religious life. I suppose you know of that group of women who are quite active and going for meetings, discussing and coming back. And the husbands were wondering what's happening because they are going quite often and discussing and coming and some things are happening in the house not so pleasant things also. And so one day the men, it seems, arranged a meeting. They said, you know, something is happening to our wives because they are going and discussing and they seem to be more volatile. They seem to be more energetic and more forceful and of course, a little hostile also. And she said, this should not happen. We should all be organized. And they called a resource person who pumped into them a little more of courage that you have to speak loudly, you have to speak strongly, you have to be always this one. And at the end of this particular pep talk that he gave, he said, I suppose all of you are convinced that we men have to be independent, we have to be free, and we have to be always assertive. And then he asked, how many of you do you think you are really assertive and free? Go to see, there was only one who put up his hand. The others said, we are still not very confident. And so the one who put up his hand, he asked him, how could you say that you are so free? And I'm very free. And my wife has given me permission to say that I'm really free, he said. So I think this is the type of freedom that we also perhaps are experiencing here and there. I took up this topic on what we call mainly icon of freedom an icon of responsibility. You know, I shall try to connect these two words, freedom and responsibility, a little later. Uh, before that, I thought perhaps a little scripture, the word of God would be useful for us in order to contextualize what we have been speaking about. I take a small passage, not a small or a little bigger passage of the gospel, gospel of Luke, Chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent to God, sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will, be, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord will give to him the throne of the father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in old age 
has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear fathers and sisters, as I said, I have taken this topic, especially because we are on the eve of the Freedom Day of our country, Independence Day of our country, and surely it coincides also with the feast of Mary, the Assumption of Mother Mary. I say that this is not just a pure coincidence, but a, a divine co coincidence for us Christians to understand that Mary is really the icon of freedom, and surely as an icon of freedom, she's also an icon of responsibility. Perhaps these two things mean very much today, that we are a free country, that we are a democratic country, that we can say that we are free, perhaps in certain limited sense maybe, but even then that seems to be great because compared to some other religions which have no freedom, which perhaps freedom is throttled or free, freedom is misunderstood, we can say that we are a little more lucky. And this year, you know, the government has said that we can hoist the flags or the wave the flags from 13th, that's today, till the 15th. And what was earlier restricted to offices and official places, now everybody in every house, in fact, it has been recommended that every house has a flag that is posted there and surely in the cars or pipes in places that we work, that we are there. And the government is also relaxed to, to make the, what we call the flag, which was considered a sacred cloth of the Khadi was prepared earlier. But now the government has little loosened to say that even polyfiber or perhaps the other plastic type of, flow, of the flags could also be tolerated. Meaning to say that, that we, when we see the flag, when we see the three colors of the flag, not only we feel proud, we once again prestige ourselves with this, what we call the freedom and the freedom of freedom movement of the country. Perhaps I am not, I don't want to be critical, but hoisting the flag on one day alone, waving the flag once today, and perhaps having it in our houses, on our tables, is it enough? Is it enough? I was just seeing a small clip of a girl, I mean, of two girls who speak among themselves, and one girl complains that uh, you have not dressed yourself fully well in the Indian colors. It should be colorful. You have put a very drab dress of white, etc. And the other girl beautifully explains and says, What's the big thing about carrying a flag on one day? Is freedom of the country is expressed or independence expressed only one on one day with just with the gesture of the flag as such? And she asked many beautiful questions. What can we say about freedom? Freedom is when perhaps we work for the country, when we work for the constitution, when we serve the poor, when we teach the people their rights, when we for the poor dear, perhaps what they deserve. There are many, many things that perhaps we have to be free of. And freedom is surely not just a word, not just a day, not just a flag, not just perhaps something, an attitude within us. And so now we come to Mother Mary. As I said, Mother Mary is the icon of freedom, is the icon of responsibility. And that we Christians have her on the Independence Day, celebrating the Assumption of Our Lady. You know, the, when you see the picture of the Assumption, it's Mary as it, she is weightless. She's like a balloon that goes up because she's completely free of body and mind and soul. What does icon mean? What's the meaning of an icon? You know, icon is something personal, something special. Icon is not a photograph. Icon of a person, if suppose someone were to draw my icon as such. Icon is not a photograph, perhaps not even a painting. But icon is something that is done by hand on the wood or on a 
cloth and it is a figure that is drawn by us according to my understanding my understanding of that and so as i said since it's not a photograph it may not resemble fully fully with all the colors and the contours and the, perhaps all the wrinkles but the artist who does this icons puts his whole and soul into it and for him perhaps this icon everything that he has done in his son has meaning the eyes are big perhaps he says that because there is something in the eyes of this person perhaps the forehead is little more broader or the hair is done in a different way and therefore everything that is done minutely by hand has got meaning for that person and so for us we can ask what meaning of the icon of mary has for us if i were to draw an icon of mother mary sitting before me or perhaps some other representation i would how would i draw her how would i put her face as such what would are the contours of a of a characteristic be there perhaps it's very thoughtful no i just read to you the gospel reading which perhaps you have read read 100 times 100 times and more than 100 times and if i were in the hall as it were to speak to you perhaps i would have asked the first question is mary really free rather is mary active or passive in this gospel you know what's the meaning of active active means like the children put up your hand at once and say give the answer or perhaps someone says do this and at once you disappear and you get the work done and passive is just listening just listening perhaps a little smiling of course or perhaps shaking your hand your head here and there so perhaps of the question that i would like to ask is in the in the annunciation narrative is mother mary active or passive perhaps the answer is mostly passive many may say she is passive angel gabriel is going on speaking and speaking and speaking and saying to her about what god wants her to do perhaps what's god's plans for her and mary perhaps does not understand much but she asks one or two important questions how can this be to me how can this be to me and mary gets the answer from the angel gabriel who says that mary it's not you it's not you but the shadow of god the holy spirit is the one who makes you the mother she gives you the what we would say the makes you mother of a generation of a whole human mankind and therefore mary's answer is behold the handmaid of the lord a beautiful answer so before i would answer this question that i have asked you myself to say that mary is active in her passivity and mary is passive in her obedience to god mary is both active and passive that's her freedom freedom doesn't mean that we are just sort of listening or doing something freedom means that we are also active and that mary shows it in a in a attitude in a response to say that first of all what does it mean to be free you know the word freedom means i mean the dictionary defines it as as the power or right to act as the power or right to act that i can do something of my own if i say i am free i can go out to my room and get i can go for a walk i can break this table if you want i can tear this paper that i want freedom is to the power to right there is as the power or the right to act in the greek the freedom has got two meanings one is to liberate 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 means i liberate you from perhaps you have been tied up you are in bondage or you are you are in a closed door i can liberate you from there it has also another meaning to say that it's exempting you from any liability you are supposed to be doing this work but i excuse you, go 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 home today i say it's a holiday or perhaps i you have to pay a loan or certain taxes i say you are liberated you are liberated you're exempted from it so there are two meanings which are very important for us to understand our own life 
our own life because Mary, as I said, she is not only active, but she is passively active. Though she does not respond in a very assertive way, but then Mary is active. And she is passive, but at the same time, actively obedient to God. You know, in the, in the Beatitudes, there's a beautiful Beatitude. I like it. Blessed are the meek, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, what's the meaning of meek? The people who are meek are, I mean, sometimes, pejoratively, we say that he's a meek, he's a bakra. He's a bakra, we say that he can't, I mean, he can't do much, he won't do much, he just shakes his head. A meek. But the Bible meekness is not weakness. Bible weakness is not weakness. A strength from inside. A strength from inside. That's a very strong expression for Mother Mary. As a lady, perhaps you can't consider her to be like a manly character of going and perhaps hitting and doing active things and bringing down things together. But then she's a strong, he's a strong pillar. He's a strong pillar of support for Jesus, for the Holy Family. And you know, when you analyze the many things, many small sayings of Mother Mary in the gospel, we see that how active, how responsible she was. And therefore, we say that her meekness is not weakness. Mary says yes. Mary says quietly yes. Mary says silently yes. Mary says uh, yes, perhaps without much of an assertiveness, but then there is a depth of strength in her. Imagine if Mary had said no. Or perhaps if Mary was even indifferent to say that it doesn't bother me, I don't want to give an answer. You know, for the whole mankind part of history would have to be written so in something else. If Mary had said no or remained indifferent. That's why we say that Mary's yes was emphatic, responsible, and nowadays they use a word for social workers and the others, what's called proactive. Proactive, because Mary was proactive. I shall let you know how she was proactive, because Mary's yes meant that she took the step and went ahead. You know, when uh, Mary is surely the, the paradigm of a liberated woman, Pope Benedict has got a beautiful saying which says that, Mary's freedom is realized in her abandoning herself totally to God's grace. Mary's freedom is realized in her abandoning herself totally to God's grace. So Mary perhaps is not a big prophet. You know, we have a lot of prophets in the Old Testament. We have prophets of our times who pontificate and who say many things which become, which happen. And the Old Testament prophets are very powerful. We, we, today's readings we had of the gospel of the, the reading from about Jeremiah from the book of Kings. And Jeremiah, who perhaps is not scared to say that this is to happen. And for the kings, he gives the order to say that you will die and you will perhaps be eaten up by the dogs, he says, for Jezebel and the others. I am so strong in this speak. Perhaps Mary is not a character that will speak. She is also not a yes man or yes woman. Many of us in religious life, perhaps we resign ourselves. Yeah, I am a religious, I am a priest, I am a sister. I have to obey my superiors, I have to obey my constitution. I have to do, it doesn't matter whether I like it or not, but let me just sort of push the cart. Yes man, yes woman perhaps, but Mary is not that. And we also see that Mary was free, first of all, because she received the news freely, good news to be freely, and freely she consents to be the mother of God. At the same time, Mary is free also for others, for others, not for herself. Freedom doesn't matter much for her. You know, freedom is very much connected with responsibility, which I will explain shortly. Our freedom has no meaning unless it is put into action. They put into action. So therefore, before I close this particular chapter or perhaps topic on freedom, I would say that there are two types of freedoms. Or rather, the freedom that we can speak of 
can be spaced on four, four aspects, as it were. First of all, freedom from sin and bondage of sin. In our own spiritual life, in our own personal life, I have to ask myself, am I really free? You know, actually that question is asked by, by St. Paul in Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. Short question, he asked, am I free? Am I free? Perhaps I have to ask that question myself. Am I really free? Am I free from all my bondage of sin, sinful tendencies, sinful attitudes, sinful thoughts, sinful imaginations, sinful desires? Am I really free? Uh, secondly, you know, we can only attain freedom through Christ. Those who believe, we can attain freedom through Christ. And I have seen, we have seen people who are destroyed, who are on the path to perhaps perdition as such, but then got up, got up, and got up very strongly, very strongly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where there is Spirit, there is freedom. The Lord is the Spirit, and where there is Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. So therefore the Lord ultimately gives us that freedom, and surely, Mary is an icon of freedom for us. Uh, secondly, I said, freedom to live and let live. Freedom to live. I have been given an existence. I don't know how, how many years I am destined to live on this earth. But as long as I live, there's a freedom for me to live and also make others let live. Let live. You know, in this Ukrainian crisis, there were so many parts we supported the Ukrainians because we thought and we were told that the Russians were not allowing the Ukrainians to live, to live an existence or to live a, a peaceful life. And therefore, am I, or rather my existence, my freedom, is it a threat for someone else? Am I perhaps coming in the way of others? Are, are the others perhaps have got that intention that when I come, it's, it's sort of a, not an enemy, but a, a competitive spirit that I perhaps make others uncomfortable, live and let live. Thirdly, I would say freedom to love. Freedom to love, it's very simple. Freedom to love. Am I free to love? Perhaps to love whom I want, to take as my friends whom I want. You know, in this freedom of love and all, in this what we call the anti-conversion bill, there was one of the things that uh, it was restricting was the aspect of love itself, that the young people cannot freely love and get married, for example, of two religions. Because that, that is, government is asking to them to ask their permission so to see that they do not convert from this religion to that religion. And uh, according to the government, they lose the freedom of the original religion as such, but the freedom to love. Am I free to love? Am I, my, my, is my heart open to everybody? Is my heart perhaps restricted to say that I have got my particular friends, I can't help it, maybe I have some particular friends, but then is my heart open to the others? And lastly, I say that freedom to serve others, to serve others, you know. Once again, I make a reference to that law, draconian law of anti-conversion. We are not supposed to be serving freely the others, in future, perhaps, if we are going to extend certain benefits to certain categories of people, to certain castes of people, so, so to poor people, and especially not of our religion, we would have to explain why you want to help them. Do you have an ulterior motive of helping them? Freedom to serve. But then on my side also, am I very selective in my service? I would like to serve perhaps in this particular area only, in this particular institution only. In this particular place only, freedom to serve. So perhaps with Mary, we have to take this, these four freedoms, ask questions for ourselves. First of all, as I said, am I really free morally and spiritually? Uh, secondly, I say that, am I free to live or am I a threat to someone else's life? I won't say threat in the sense I'm not holding any gun or sword as such, but then sometimes when someone walks into the room, we are all quiet. We are all perhaps, I don't say that we reject the person, but we are conscious of the person's presence or rejection as such. Thirdly, I say the freedom to love. 
Am I open? Is my heart open to everybody? Is my heart still partial as it were that I have got in my mind that certain people not be loved? Some people don't belong to my caste, my language, my religion. Perhaps I can't open myself fully. I can understand that we are not perfect. But then there is a certain thing in us that perhaps restricts also love. And finally, I said freedom to serve. Freedom to serve. Am I really free to serve? Or am I being selective in my service? In my selective in my attributes to say that I would like to go to this particular place, but this, 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 it's a conditional service. It's a conditional love as such, perhaps. So my dear friends, I go to my next point. What I say is the freedom may be icon of responsibility. You know, it's a nice thing to enjoy freedom, to say that we are free. I am like a bird. I am like a balloon. I can go anywhere. I can set anywhere. You know, there are many persons who are really, who think they are free, but ultimately they have their own restrictions that they would not like to be caught. They are fence sitters. They would say that I am free, but then I would not like to do anything. Freedom, Mary, icon of responsibility. Icon of responsibility. And Mary was very, used this freedom for her to shape her responsibility. You know, freedom goes along with responsibility. Freedom without response, without response is anarchy. Anyone can do anything. I can come when I want. I can go when I want. Who is my superior? Who is my inferior? I order as I think. I am the, I am the master of everything that I see. That's my freedom as I, we think so. Responsibility is something perhaps which is attached. It doesn't restrict freedom as such, but it gives an attribute to freedom to say that it's a responsible freedom. Responsibility goes along with freedom and that Mary teaches us very well. As I said, I would come back to Mary, you know, after this reading of the Annunciation that we read, Mary visits her cousin Elizabeth. It's beautiful to see that freedom is there, but something is happening with haste, as it were, with haste. Mary's freedom is running, running, running. And Mary takes the first step to go to Elizabeth. Perhaps someone could have said that as a mother, as a pregnant woman, she should be more responsible of taking care of her own child. Why is she so foolish as to take risk of her child? But that's Mary's freedom and responsibility. That Mary says that I am truly liberated when I'm in the service of the others. And therefore, Mary goes with haste. You know, in the Gospel of Luke, I had certain attributes sometimes to say this. And Mary goes haste, it means almost running as it were, running as it were. And that's the type of responsibility that we are called upon to. As much as I say that I am, I am responsible, I am free, I should also act with responsibility. And so the responsibility is the fruit of a committed, liberated person. Responsibility is a fruit of a committed, liberated person. Mary's freedom is the hidden power of her discipleship, of her responsibility. Mary's freedom is the hidden power of the of the Mary's of the of the first disciple. Mary was the first disciple of Jesus. She never contested that you are my son. Therefore, you are ranking wise, status wise. You are this one. No, Mary was humble enough to be Jesus' first disciples. And what's the definition of disciple? Jesus gave that definition to Mother Mary in a, in a very difficult way. You know, that uh, Gospel of Luke chapter 8, verse 21 onwards, Mary is supposed to have come to that gathering where Jesus was preaching or preaching. And she was standing somewhere behind there. But someone noticed and says, yeah, the mother is come. Your mother is come. And if you are so great, your mother has to be honored. Bring her in the front and perhaps honor her, introduce her. And what does Jesus say? Perhaps it looks like a little insulting words for Mother Mary, that he does not acknowledge Mother's presence there. Rather, he says, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? One who hears the word of God and acts on it. He's, she is my mother. She is my 
sister, she is my, uh, he is my brother, whatever it is. And therefore, the definition of the disciple that Jesus gives, and perhaps it fits most, most, I would say, fittingly to Mother Mary, is one who hears the word of God and acts upon it, and acts upon it, hearing the word and acting. There are two, two perhaps, two strings to it, or rather two bows to it. When I speak of bow, when you, you bend the bow, bow a little, and when you shoot the arrow, as it were, it goes much more f forcefully as such. And that is maybe the, the, I would say, the picture of freedom and responsibility, that we have to, the freedom that is bent together, it flies in the form of an arrow. That's the responsibility for us. And so Mary, as I said, hears the word of God. There are two words which I like to analyze. One is hearing, and the other one is acting, both part of responsibility. And Mary does it beautifully. Mary, of course, perhaps it's impulsive and certain things that going about, and especially the, the episode of, uh, of Elizabeth, Mary going in a haste, is something impulsive in her. But then at other places, we know that she listens to the word of God, and Mary acts on it. Mary cooperated with Joseph in protecting her son. Mary never questioned Perhaps Joseph and says that why this, why we, we are not told. But then we see that Mary following blindly Joseph. And of course, I could make another perhaps reflection on Joseph himself, who is so quiet a character, who is so passive a character. Perhaps may, about Joseph, nothing we hear, but a word he speaks. And he's a, perhaps, I wouldn't say that's a dumb character, but he's a silent character. And Mary follows him. Mary gives him all the respect as such. You know, did you, we, when you analyze that episode of Jesus getting lost in the temple, chapter 2 of Luke 41, Mary and Joseph are searching for Jesus for three days. They have come back and they see Jesus among those perhaps Pharisees and scribes, the teachers there. And he is arguing there, but Mary is little. I would say that time she gets into herself to say that I have to question my son. I have to confront him. The better thing would have been to leave it to Joseph. The father should do it. Mother should be a little more softer. But then perhaps Joseph himself, a humble man, pushes mother Mary. I don't want to hurt my son. You could do it a little more softly. But Mary doesn't do it softly. Mary asks Jesus straight away, son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you. Why have you done this for us? Mary is proactive. Mary is responsible. Mary's responsibility is beautifully explained here. And it's not only that. Mary, you know, in that small wordings that are there in that particular phrase, Luke chapter 2, verse 41, Mary says, your father and I, she doesn't say I and your father, she puts her husband, Joseph, however silent he be, he puts him under this one, in the foremost light. And uh, we have also seen that Mary at the foot of the cross, at the foot of the cross, silence, but also active and proactive. Once again, Mary is proactive and she takes disciples after the death of Jesus in that cynical, sits with them and the first M was the first fires of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Mary is there. Mary is proactive, as I said. And therefore, Mary is responsible. Her responsibility is really expressed in the best way as she is active. Perhaps I could ask myself, Mary is an epitome for us. She's an icon for us. She's something that we can draw ourselves to say that this is Mary. And what do I get out of Mary's freedom and responsibility? I have to ask myself, am I responsible in my family, perhaps in my community, in my community? Because, you know, when you live in a community, perhaps in a parish also, there is always what we call the passing the buck. Passing the buck, we give it to someone else, let him do it, let him help. The responsibility, if it is some good thing that is brings name and fame to me, perhaps I would take it up. 
I would take it. But then who takes dirty jobs? Who would take those jobs that are not left out? But then God is his own way of choosing us. God is his own way of burdening us, of giving on our shoulders a certain cross. You know, there's something called suffering. And there's something called vicarious suffering. Vicarious suffering. You know what's vicarious suffering? Vicarious suffering is a suffering of someone else that is put on you. The superior has to suffer. Perhaps if someone says yes or no, or does it comes to the, the parents have to suffer because of their children. Many of our perhaps mothers, wives are suffering with your husbands are irresponsible. It's a vicarious suffering, a vicarious responsibility that we are asking. But ultimately, Mary gives us the example of being a disciple of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus. Always perhaps God shapes our life, gives us freedom, responsibility. And the responsibility that has been given to us is not just for the sake of a small movement as such, perhaps for a life. And how does cut God cut and own our freedom sometimes? What is really freedom, perhaps wrong type of freedom that I'm using, God cuts it. There are certain joys, perhaps God puts it short for us and tells us that this, you are meant for the others. Your freedom is for the others and therefore your responsibility is to carry the cross of others also. Last month I celebrated the feast of, I was with the Bridget Iron sisters and I said it's a beautiful meditation on the life of Bridget. You know, she lost her husband at the age of 41. Of course, she got married when she was very young, I think at the age of 13 or 14. And 14th century that was and that's the time she loved her husband very much. She bore eight children, four girls and four boys. And just when the family was flowering as it were, the husband, he fell sick at the first time, he was okay. But the second time when he died, Vijit was heartbroken. Why should God do this for me? I'm bringing up my family. And she really loved her husband. In fact, in seeing her autobiography, it is said she loved the husband like her own body. She spent days together at his grave, crying and praying. But then she gets up. Gets up because, you know, God made her free. It's ironic to, to take away her husband and God to make her free. We should not have prayers like that to say that, take away this person so that I am free. But I don't know how God's plans are when the husband died and when she got up, when she showed up, she said, my life is for the others. And that's how perhaps not that she doesn't bother about her children. They don't matter much, but the works of the church and especially the poor, the poor, how many people she tends and she, uh, she becomes, she grows or blooms into a character, personality, a gigantic personality. Perhaps you could have said that of the husband who was alive, she would surely be a person, a personality, but not a gigantic because the husband would surely have to say something to say of her being assertive. But this is God's plan. Does God, do we allow God or do we permit God to remove certain things that I think are enjoyable or perhaps great things for me? I am free and have got certain rights to say, perhaps I think Sometimes in our captivity, in our bondage, or in our difficulty, we can also experience freedom. But the Stan Swami is a great example. He died in a prison, but then today perhaps we speak of him as more free than anyone else, that he could speak so bravely that we don't have those guts. We don't have that spirit as it were, that he was most responsible for those tribals who can live and be happy with the works that he has done. So my dear brothers and sisters, I leave you at this to say that the freedom which we experience and today as we celebrate the Independence Day, and I said a happy, a spiritual coincidence of Father Mary being our symbol or icon of our freedom, but we don't leave it at this. If that is it, we will be only waving the flags on 15th of August and finish or forget on the 16th of August, go back to our rut, to go back to our original life. Mary's freedom would be from 16th of August to start continuing and to be more and more responsible in our life. 
I ask God for a grace for myself. You know, St. Paul says, Mary was about, Mary was able to do this because she was full of grace. The gospel tells us Mary was full of grace. The grace of God gave her the spirit of freedom and also uh, attitude of responsibility. St. Paul has got a beautiful saying also, as which I repeated to you, to say that ultimately God is the one who makes us free. Jesus is the one who makes us free. And in Jesus, we have the fullest freedom for us. I say a small prayer for you and I bless you so that you can continue with your, I suppose today is the day of recollection for many of the communities. When I went to the Rosarians, they told me, I, of course, I didn't want to disturb them. And I heard that they were doing the recollection today. But since we had a little to talk, I thought I was disturbing the Rosarians with India recollection. I would say continue your recollection. Pray for me very specially. Pray for our country. Pray for our political leaders. Pray very specially for your community members that God may give us a real freedom. At the same time, a voice to be active, proactive, and responsible in our life. Heavenly Father, we bless and thank you for this day. I thank you for this group of fathers and sisters who are listening to my talk. And as they recollect, as they meditate upon Mary being an icon of freedom, an icon of responsibility, we ask a special grace for each of their communities, each of the members of the communities. Bless them inspire them, make them free from the bondage of sins, give them the freedom to live and let live others, give them the freedom to love others consciously and impartially, and give them the freedom also to serve impartially everyone else that they are asked to or destined to serve. We ask a grace of responsibility and those who are in responsible places and the superiors the generals, the provincials, and me also in my the archdiocese that I'm serving here. Give us that spirit and taste of responsibility for Mother Mary, not to shirk it on anyone else, but be courageous to take not only our crosses, but perhaps the vicarious suffering or the vicarious crosses of others too as part of our life. Bless India, our country. Give us the spirit of freedom. Bless our leaders in a very special way. And may this freedom be celebrated, not just a day, but activated every day of our life in our responsible behavior and in the exercise of our constitutional rights. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.